vote with us uh, on any of these key issues. That's uh, Brewster and, and Hart. Danny and Noya was a hero. I mean, he really did a yeoman job. The other two didn't, uh, how in the world they can go out and help uh, on a vote like this when they're voting themselves the other way, uh, I, I just don't know. Oh, but they always do that, and Mansfield's got that kind of organization, and what you got to have is one man like Bobby Baker that uh, talks to the Sunders themselves and asks them to vote and pleads with them and tell them what the president wants, what the secretary of treasury wants, what he can and will do for them, and so on and so forth. Now, we don't have that man. He's thrown that to the wolves and helped them smear him because he didn't want anybody to have any power. So the only next thing he can do is make a Joe Barr do that, uh, who can just see the senators and contact them himself. Now, Mike, they all like him, but they don't pay a damn bit of attention one way or the other. They just, uh, they, he pick up a little information. Larry can sit down and talk to him. Now, if Larry's not going to do it, and you're not going to do it, well, I'm going Barr's got to do it. Now, if oh. Barr doesn't do it, I'll do it. But I oh. damn sure want it done, and I think this is absolutely disgraceful. This is the worst day that my administration has had, and I just think it's inexcusable because uh, I know Mansfield. He was my deputy for years, and hell, he'd vote against me when, when he was my deputy. And he's got this damned... Uh, a uh, Brooklyn boy that's so busy working on the Chinese communists and seeing the Soviet Union people that he hadn't got any time to ask a senator, and he wouldn't anyway. And he looks at him in the wrong eye when he does. So you can't get any help there. Uh, the best that you can hope for is to sit around and hope you can get a little information from their offices and hope you can keep him in line and so he won't stay above it all up in the cloud and hope that you can get to... To folks talk to. Now, the man that'll get you some votes there, Russell Long can beg them and get a few to vote with you. George Smathers can beg them and get a few to vote. And they all both ought to be put back in the, the old days when they worked a little bit. Uh, Russell relies more on speeches than he does on his private talks, and it'd be better if he talked less and did more maneuvering. Uh, George Smathers can maneuver and can get them to do it. Uh, Glenn the, Anderson is, is good. He's excellent. He's excellent. And I just ask him and make him guide and let him think that he's leading it and he's running it. And I'd ask Douglas to help me on this conference report. And I'll call everyone up and ask him to give me a list tomorrow of the potentials that we got. Now, we haven't got any chance to get proud of and we haven't got any chance to to get mean people like Munt. We haven't got any chance to uh, get Hartke. And we haven't got a chance to get to uh, Gore or anybody of the type that uh, that might have left us. Uh, I don't know whether he did leave us, but if he did, you can't get that. But you sure can get people like Bartlett to at least work on them. And Eastland. Now, there's no reason for Eastland to be against us. Uh, he, uh, he's done this twice to me uh, uh, on... Uh on uh, once before we, we, we just were sure we had him in 1940, uh, in 1964. And I, 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 I'm going to talk to Drew Davis and see exactly what the conversation was, but there were a couple of checks on, on Jim Eastland that, uh, that showed he was going to, going to be responsible and stay with us. Now, Dick Russell was against you on both of them, wasn't he? He was. He and was. did Talmadge tell you he was going to be against you on telephone? He told us that he was, uh, and he would he would give us a vote if we had to have it in committee, but that he was publicly exposed, and he, he would, I, I consider him not to have given us a commitment. I consider him an honorable man uh, uh, on, on, on this vote. Well, I'd ask him to, tonight and tomorrow if there's any chance that when you drop these out, if he or Russell can go with you. Oh, he's certainly, uh, he's certainly one of the fellows that I... Now, the only thing about asking him is, I, I don't understand is he told us he was going to do it, that he, he was one of the nine that voted against the bill. Now, I, for the life of me, don't understand that vote. But he voted against the bill. Now, I suppose it's because uh, he, he feels that the uh, expenditures ought to be reduced. I guess that's his ra rationalization of it, but... Uh, Anyway, he was recorded as voting against. There were nine uh, voted against. Bass, Dominic, Gore, Hickenlooper, Miller, Morse, Nelson, Pearson, and Talmadge. So I don't know whether I can get help from Talmadge on a conference report or not, uh, but I'm going to try because he's always played... To I He's always ask him, sir, i got to have your advice. If we can't get this bill, we can't get any, and I don't know if... Uh, if uh, 
uh, you and the Brussel uh, in your judgment and what do you if you find out for them. Because if you get don't get that cross, you won't get the other side and there's Eastland now probably won't come. So you gotta know where you are and we keep taking another mauling. Well now, uh I will get this list of potentials of the, whatever it adds up to, the twenty or thirty that we're wrong on one or another of these boats that we think we might have a chance of getting stay with us on on the conference. Now, I'm going to rely on this one only on my own contacts, Larry O'Brien's contacts, and Joe Barr's contacts. I'm not going to depend on anybody else, Mr. President, because it just uh, it just doesn't doesn't seem to work. Well, you can rely on Marvin. You can rely on uh, on Jake over here because Jake's around that Senate for six years and Marvin's been around it and uh, uh, we got Long on the phone and we got Symington on the phone and we switched some this morning on the I know, you, 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 Long and Symington uh, that that was a, a that was very productive and it and Brewster told us if you if you need us we'll vote with you if you call me and tell me that you got to have my vote he told us that the other thing that I, and this is the last comment I want to make about the about the situation up there we can do all of this polling and get these commitments, but one of the things that is very difficult for me to understand in the way in which uh, a department, departmental representatives are handicapped is getting your people to the floor and getting them voted. Now, for example, on the Hartke thing today, uh, neither Joe Clark nor Tom Dodd, both of whom would have been with us, were voted. Well, I'll now, tell you, I'll tell you, all right, I'll tell you why. I'll tell you how to do that. Just get some simpleton that can read and write, pay him $400 a month and put him in the gallery. And when they call Clark's name and he's with you and he doesn't answer the roll call, walk out the telephone, call him his office, say, Senator Clark going to come vote. We sure do need his vote. This is Joe Glutz. I work for Secretary Fowler. The tax builds up and we really need him. Then when they go down to Eastland and Eastland uh, doesn't answer the roll call, the first one, go call. You, you, That's what I've done for eight well, years. Non, a, a reliance on 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 the Mansfield and oh, is just uh, not to be. Did you ever try to shove macaroni? Did you ever? God on my, you you know that. Can't you see that? Well, Mansfield wouldn't ask the the Pope to do anything. He just uh, he just a sweet, kind, nice fellow that's above it all. And Vallejo doesn't do anything. He's not in that. The only guy I ever did that is Bobby Beckham. They put him in the penitentiary. And uh, putting him in there because he got the votes for Bob Kerr and brought $100,000 back for Bob Kerr, which everybody's done. But uh, our crowd, and I, I'm ashamed of my administration, but uh, that's what we're doing. And we got to do these things ourselves because he's not there. But Mansfield's not going to do it, and Vallejo's not going to do it. And what I do is I, I damn sure try to be in that gallery. I have Joe Barr in that gallery. I have uh, Bowman, if he can do anything, and take a roll call with me, Manitos. And when a guy doesn't meet, one of the three or four of them sitting up there ought to go to the booth there and call him. And call his administrative assistant, ought to know his administrative assistant. Uh, some people in your department on all your legislation ought to know all these people. They just got to learn them because President and, and these folks over here, Larry carried a good deal of it last year. But you had the best record of anybody in the department last year. But what I think is, I think if everybody got to be big shots, I think that uh, Joe was undersecretary and he's no longer just a, he went to FDIC. But when he was just out there leg man, by God, he knew where they were and the whole the eye is so good that I want him to take Larry's job. But this is no tribute to their talking. He relied on True Davis. Hell, he can't find his way to the Capitol. And uh, for the oldest man up here, Eastland, Joe Barr ought to find out that, and Joe Bowman. And uh, you, mm. and if you don't, I will. Mm. I got time. I'll do it. I, I had a list this morning. I wanted to call them, and they, uh, I had to, I had Marvin call some, and I called some. We called Randolph. Mm. That's goddamn Randolph told us that he would, uh, he he couldn't go with us on Ribicoff at all, but he would help us on anything else. Now, if we'd have known we needed him on this, we'd have called him on this. But they only told me it's 59 to 31, and I can't wait till the roll call's over with. If they just told me when it started, I'd have called Randolph myself. We had him on the phone. I know I had We had, we had Brewster. I Brewster know. said, I'll help you if I have to. But we didn't call him because we didn't know it until we read it in the goddamn, I heard it on the radio. 
They don't call me. They When they get a good boat, 74 to 10, they get me right out of the bathtub. But by God, when they lose one, why, you don't hear from I had, uh, I had 48 and 7. I had uh, I thought we had 55 votes when that thing started on excises. And 11 of them but that I had counted, definitely. The ones named, the names I gave you, uh, turned around. Well, they gave me 58 and 59 day before yesterday morning while Joe well, was in I, the shower. I, I take one every day. I, I, they, they change by the day. So I had mine, I had a, one uh, yesterday, and then I had another one today. And my mine for March... Uh, uh, well, you take the liberals and you ask Douglas tonight uh, what he can do about helping us get a conference report adopted. Ask Clint Anderson who he can help you with. Can What do you can you do about Bartlett? Now, by God, he helped Bartlett in Alaska plenty. And uh, uh, I don't mind calling Bartlett. I'd love to call him right this second. But if you all will do a little interference and get the picture, and then, by God, call me tomorrow. I'm going to meet with all the Senate chairmen day after tomorrow. Uh, but... Uh, uh, That'd be too late, but I, I just like to get into this thing, and I like to get Marvin in, and I like to get uh, Jake in, and I'll tell you, we can, we do some favors over here, and we can, uh, we can do some changing, but I sure am not going to stay in this office without resigning and let Hartke be more powerful than the President and the Secretary of Treasury and the Undersecretary and, and the Chairman of the Finance Committee, because that's just, uh, Christ, that's oh, too much. So uh, I would get the advice from Talmadge uh, before he goes to bed whether he thinks that uh, uh, he's got to vote against this conference report when they take these out. If he does, just say, I don't want to bother you. You're honorable. You're fine. I just want to ask you because this means a lot to me and the president. We don't want to have to be irresponsible, but uh, we, we want to find out. And what do, what's your judgment, Herman, on Senator Russell? And I'd hang that up because he goes to bed at 830, and I hung up his phone. I'd call him and just say, right. we're meeting in the morning, and I've got a problem. Right. And uh, we we can't appropriate this money in the, in the tax bill. That's awful bad practice, as you as a governor would know, Herman. And on this telephone thing, I know your problem. But certainly, you want us to get $6 billion that you don't want that deficit that big. But we're likely to get locked up here. And the president asked me to ask you if you could go with us on the conference report if you left out. And now uh, we need you and we want you, and will you? If he says no, just say, I love you and thank you. Appreciate it. And then when he does tell you, ask him if you think what Senator Russell will do. Then I'd ask Clint Anderson to give me advice on which ones of these uh, 10 or 15 that he could help. And I'd ask him to ask for Bartlett. Say, the president told me that you've done more for Alaska than anybody, and he'd given you all the damn money you wanted for Bartlett. We can't understand Bartlett. And uh, what's happening here? That's number two. And I'd ask him if he couldn't do something with Bertie. And uh, uh, then I think I just called Jim Eastland tonight myself and said, Jim, now we got to have conference support. And we can't accept these two things. And uh, do you won't you vote for the conference support? I want your commitment. And the president wants it. I'd call Don Russell the same thing, and I'd call Stennis. And then if you don't call him, I'll call him uh, before they get out of bed in the morning. We'll see right quick how many there we can switch. And then I'd get bar after some of these damned uh, middle-of-the-roaders and uh, folks like Pete Williams and uh, Nelson and Metcalf. And I'd ask Mansfield if he can't do anything with Metcalf. We did ask him, and he said he'd talk to him. Now, what, what the hell happened, God only knows. Okay, you call me in the morning. Uh, we'll get all, on. All right. I think you're right, though, and for God's sakes, whatever else you do, if we don't have a tax bill, let's don't give them a telephone tax. All right. Uh, all right. <laughs>